So we've got new motherboards, updated features, a new chipset, more pins in the socket, and of course, new CPUs. Meet the Intel i9-10900K, the self-proclaimed fastest gaming CPU in the world. Assuming that's true, let's build the world's fastest gaming computer for 2020. Gamer, content creator, movie lover, you can be all three with BenQ's new EW3280U monitor. With a slick construction and minimal bezels, it'll look great on any desk in any situation. The 4K IPS panel shines for color accurate work, but when you want to kick back and watch a movie, BenQ's HDRI technology takes your media to the next level. Or fire up some super fast gameplay and enjoy a tear free experience with AMD FreeSync. Don't make compromises when it comes to your display choice. Get everything you need in one awesome package. For more information, head to BenQ.com or check the link below. Thanks for tuning into the channel today, guys, and I hope you enjoy this build. If you like what you see here, please be sure to hit that little subscribe button down there and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the builds that we do here on the channel every week. I try to mix it up with different hardware, different cases, different form factors, and different price or performance targets. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys want to see, and I'll try to make it happen on the channel moving forward. So, by now, you've probably all heard about this chip. This is Intel's new mainstream flagship processor, the i9-10900K, and while there are some things about it that are easy to hate on, Intel, I think, is moving in the right direction with a lot of the choices that they've made here. First off, for the first time in a few generations, the price of the new processors will be about the same as the outgoing ones, meaning that on release, you should see the 10900K selling for somewhere in the neighborhood of about $500, the same as the 9900K. They've bumped up the core and thread count to 10 and 20 respectively, and boost clocks are also on the rise with single core turbo hitting 5.3 gigahertz under the right conditions. This is due to Intel's thermal velocity boost, which plays similar to AMD's precision boost and takes into account things like thermals and power. Since the 10900K is still on the 14 nanometer manufacturing process, this means that we now have 10 cores in the same package size as we had four cores on just a few years ago. In order to try to alleviate some of the thermal constraints and allow for those higher boost frequencies, Intel has shaved down the die height and slightly thickened the IHS, allowing for better heat dissipation. Regardless though, we have to just about be at the limits of how many 14 nanometer cores can fit onto this size package without overloading standard cooling solutions, and I'm anxious to see what 10 nanometers will bring. In all fairness, what Intel has managed to do with 14 plus 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 nanometers is pretty amazing, and it does demonstrate what's possible with a mature platform. As the 9900K was the previous king of gaming CPUs, and the 10900K is faster, has more cores, and has better memory support, all the ingredients are there to make this the new processor to have if you simply want the best of the best for gaming. Unfortunately, while today we'll be building one of the very first systems to use this chip, I can't yet test it for you. Look for performance data at a later time when I will definitely bring back this build in a full gaming desk setup and test everything out. In addition to more cores and higher boost, we also have added features baked directly into the architecture like Wi-Fi 6, faster official memory support, and 2.5 gig LAN. We see all of this brought to life on the new ASUS ROG Strix Z490E gaming motherboard. And let's start with the IO for that reason. The fixed shield is always a welcome sight, as is the massive USB connectivity. There are 10 total USB ports here, along with HDMI, DisplayPort, Wi-Fi 6 antennae, a BIOS flashback button, and the LAN port. Strix branding is pretty apparent, and we can only speculate as to what some of the lettering over the chipset actually says, but it does look pretty cool nonetheless. You also get a 14 plus two phase power design and improved heat sinks over the VRMs connected by a copper heat pipe. Overall, a really nice set of features and aesthetic touches. 
Now, I don't usually deep dive like this into CPUs and motherboards for these builds, but as both of these are brand new, I figured that I'd give you some info on what we'll be building with here today. Of course, we will need some other components to complete our system, so let's talk about those two. The fastest gaming PC wouldn't be complete without, of course, the fastest gaming GPU on the market. And I guess Titans withstanding and not really meant for gaming anyway, the 2080 Ti is still the top of the pile. This is Zotac's Amp Extreme version. And I don't know, what else can we really say about it except that it's indeed pretty extreme. It's huge. It's got a monster fin stack and a triple fan cooler, bold RGB accents and a factory overclock. This should spit out some seriously high fidelity gameplay. For memory, I'll be using a 4x8 gig kit of Corsair's Dominator Platinum RGB. This is the 3466 speed version, and I think, given the platform, we shouldn't have any problem at all hitting that rated speed. Maybe we can even go higher. Our power supply is provided by Be Quiet and is 80 plus platinum rated. This is the new Straight Power 11 Platinum and will give us 850 highly efficient watts of output, plus basically silent operation as well as full modularity. And speaking of Be Quiet, here's another new product from our German friends. The Pure Base 500 was one of my favorite cases from last year, and now they've basically made it better in every way with the 500DX. The front is now a mesh instead of a solid panel, and they've added RGB accent strips to the front and to the interior that default to Be Quiet Orange. The case comes with three Pure Wings fans, and even with a small footprint, supports up to a 360 millimeter radiator in the front. We're gonna need that space to fit our cooler, which is the winner of my AIO comparison from last week, the NZXT Kraken Z73. This thing crushed the competition when it came to keeping temps the lowest at every fan speed. And it's got the coolest looking block and pump top with a 60 millimeter LCD programmable screen. Rounding out our components is the two terabyte version of Intel's 660p SSD. This is still one of the best bargains in storage as it's NVMe and can regularly be found for about $100 per terabyte, especially when it goes on sale. So now that we have all of our stuff detailed here, let's time lapse this sucker and see how it turns out.
All right, so we are all done with the very first Z490 slash 10900K build on the channel, and maybe the very first one on YouTube. I'm, I'm not actually not even sure about that. Uh, unfortunately, even though I would very much like to, I can't talk to you about the performance data, the thermal data, anything like that. So make sure if you wanna see that, there will be a follow-up video to this. So we're gonna be taking this same system, doing a full desk gaming setup, doing all the performance metrics that you guys wanna see, and that'll be coming later on the channel. So get subscribed if you don't wanna miss that. But I did take some precautions, as I'm sure you guys saw in the B-roll, just to prevent Black Hawk helicopters and Intel's lawyers from descending down onto my roof. Uh, so I have blurred out even the idle temperatures on the Z73. So. Uh, sorry that I can't show you guys that. Initially, I thought it wasn't that big of a deal, but then again, I don't really know. So better safe than sorry. And uh, we'll talk about all that at a later time when we can. What we can talk about is this build itself, the build process, what I thought of this case. Now, the 500DX from Be Quiet uh, is very similar in layout to the original PureBase 500, and that's a good thing. Uh, I really did like building in that case, but when I did that initial build, it was with kind of mid-range hardware. This is another story. You can still fit everything in here. I have the 360 rad up front. I have this massive graphics card in there. I have all the wiring around back. It all fits. It's not an issue, but you will have to make some compromises. The first thing is if you're gonna put a 360 in here, you, I did have to take out the hard drive cage. I also had to change the way I had the fans oriented. Initially in the build montage, maybe you guys saw I had them on the inside of the case. But in order to fit our very massive GPU, I had to flip them and put them on the outside of the case instead. I also had to be creative with how I routed all our cabling up at the top. There's not a whole lot of room up top here. So in order to fit the two fans, the two EPS cables, uh, and all the cabling coming off of the Kraken, I had to basically take the fans out, install all the wiring first, drop the motherboard in, screw down the motherboard and then reinstall the fans. So there's a reason why in the build montage you didn't see me physically dropping the motherboard into this case because there was a lot of cursing when I did that. It was difficult. It, it, was, uh, it, it was challenging given space constraints, but it all does fit. So if you are planning a build like this, in this case, just know it's gonna take you guys a little bit longer than normal. It took me a little bit longer than normal, but everything goes in. I was able to close the back panel, no problem. There's plenty of tie down points for cabling around back. So you could get everything in here and it does obviously look really good. And I have high hopes for our thermal results given that there is additional ventilation here over the original 500. Uh, but I guess we'll find that out pretty soon. So if you don't wanna miss the upcoming second part of this project where we do the full desk setup and I talk about its performance in various games, make sure to get subscribed, hit that notification bell and hit that like button if this video did anything for you. Also, if you wanna talk about what you think of this system, what you think the performance is gonna be, even what you think of Intel's new CPUs, let me know down below in the comments. I'll be uh, lurking around there and uh, maybe I'll chat with some of you guys as far as what I think we're gonna see versus what you guys think. And um, yeah, we'll generate some kind of healthy discussion that way, hopefully without me breaking any NDAs. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, I really enjoyed this build and I'm looking forward to part two. Hope you guys are too. I will see you next time.